Hey, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at CQT. I do want to mention that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before you buy cryptocurrencies on exchanges. Now, I do want to mention as well that we do have two donation links down below in the description. So if you feel like you want to support Ukraine financially, then go over to those links and support either the Ukrainian refugees or Ukraine's military. Those are official donation links. You can double, triple check them. Those links have nothing to do with me. The money does not go through me or any of my accounts. They go straight to those uh, funds. Uh, and yeah, so Thank you. Thank you for everyone who has been donating. We really appreciate all the support. Now let's jump into the chart. So this chart is on the trading view. It takes the data from KuCoin. And yeah, we haven't had an update on CQT in a very long time. Uh, so the last update I do think was, I don't know, I want to say <laughs> at the end of January is probably when we had that update. So Essentially, what is happening right now is we find ourselves in a falling wedge. As you can see, we do have a triangle pattern or a triangular pattern over here that does seem uh, is coming closer and closer to the apex of the pattern. And we eventually are going to get a breakout. And the first target that I want to target and tell you about is this 45 cents target over here. So uh, 45 cents is where is where I think we're going to run into the into resistance uh, after we break out but the actual target from the pattern is going to be slightly higher now how do you get that target basically that's where the pattern was created and that is going to be at 73 cents now why do i say that's where the pattern was created because if you see over here you do have a touch of resistance right so that's where the initial touch was you came back down created the support and then you got the second touch of resistance over here. So you need at least two touches uh, for a valid level. The resistance line has two uh, touches over here. And the support has, I think, yeah, four touches right now at this point. So hopefully we don't lose this support trend line below us. And hopefully we can stay uh, closer, uh, get closer to the apex and break out eventually. So yeah, that's that's how these patterns work. Obviously, if we did break to the downside, I would be targeting 24 cents over here, uh, 24 and a half cents just to be safe, which is the 2.272 Fibonacci retracement. As you can see, we have our Fib levels with the targets to the downside as our swing high is over here August 12th and our swing low is over here September 25th. And we did have the 1.618 target over here at 45 cents. And after we lost the uh, the first Fib level, that's exactly the target that I gave you. And we got even below that. At this point, we're even below that. So target was met over here at 45 cents. So if you were shorting CQT, congratulations. That was a nice trade for you. Uh, also, the 20 EMA and the 55 EMA obviously had a bullish cro a bearish cross back in November. And ever since then, it was a disgusting downtrend, to be honest with you. So CQT is is down quite a bit. I know people are getting frustrated with this project. Now, if I just extend this resistance trend line over here. So this is a resistance trend line that we've had for quite a while right now. And we have been hitting it. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So we have four bounces off this level. And potentially after we break out of this falling wedge, we may run into it as resistance once again. So be prepared for that. Uh, so, okay, now long term, I do want to break through the golden ratio here, which is at $1.17 or almost 18 cents, uh, which is the golden ratio. And that's a very important level that you need to break to uh, through because if you don't and you actually run into it as resistance and if you get sent back down, then that's your dead cat bounce scenario. You're printing a high, a lower high. And from there, you are potentially going to print a lower low, which is your downtrend and, you know, that is your potential bear market at play. Uh, but you could argue that this is a bear market for CQT. So a lot of the altcoins are getting bearish crosses on the weekly charts, which is very significant because the higher the time frame, the more importance and the more and the more significant all the crosses and the patterns are. But Bitcoin still hasn't printed a bearish cross on the weekly. Bitcoin isn't in a bear market, believe it or not. It's just consolidating. And if this is what our new bear markets are going to look like, then we are very near the bottom of 
this supposed bear market, but it really isn't a bear market in my opinion. You can look at the charts to confirm this. Now, you have your target uh, out of the um, falling wedge, which is over here at what at 73 cents. You have your golden ratio target. You have your 1.618 target over here. Above that, you have your 1.414 and 55 cents, the 1.272 at 63 cents. So those are just some targets for you to look at if you are looking to, you know, have quick flips so the target from the falling wedge is a 145 percent trade which is not bad at all in my opinion but we need to break through the pink resistance trend line because that has been suppressing us for quite some time now jumping into the daily rsi over here so you can see that we are in this channel of pattern over here basically you're continuously making higher highs and higher lows, which is good, right? So you are going to run into this resistance here, potentially come back down for support and so on and so forth and until you break the trend, break out of the resistance, get overbought, and then absolutely capitulate. But also keep an eye on this white trend line over here. So we've had two touches off of this trend line, one over here and the second over here, which is actually crossing with the pink trend line. So Essentially, what can happen is when we start breaking out of the falling wedge, we may run into the white trend line as resistance and then come back down, right? That is something that could happen. Also, what could happen is we can actually break through the white trend line, run into the pink trend line and get re and get uh, sent back down from there. So just keep an eye on the RSI, draw this out on your charts. If you're looking to take some you know, profits at these resistance levels based on the RSI, you're looking for some swing trades, for some quick flips. Then just look until the RSI reaches this resistance level, potentially set a quick limit sell order, get rid of some tokens, right? If it goes higher, sell some more. And then once it come back, uh, when, once it goes back down, then buy back in, all right? It's simple as that, uh, but I wouldn't recommend uh, selling exactly as soon as we break out of the falling wedge, because at that point, once you break the horizontal resistances, especially those that have been suppressing us for quite a while, you tend to break out with authority and very, very impulsively. Now, also, I want to uh, bring your attention to this bullish divergence that we have. So uh, these over here are called lower lows. So you're printing lower lows, right? Because you're constantly going down lower and lower. But on the RSI, you're doing exactly the opposite. You're printing higher lows, right? So it's actually in reverse. Now, this is called a bullish divergence. And this means that we are setting up for a potential break to the upside. And this could actually co-align with a breakthrough or a breakout from this falling wedge, right? And all of these patterns are coming together and showing us that we can expect a breakout relatively soon. We only need Bitcoin not to crap the bed while it's going to be breaking out because we don't want the party to be spoiled by Bitcoin as it usually is. So yeah, that is that is pretty much it. Uh, we have a bullish divergence. We have a falling wedge, which is a bullish reversal pattern. And yeah, things are looking good. We are getting a bit overextended from the 20 EMA on the daily chart as well. So that's another sign that, that we can potentially have at least a back test of resistance of the 20 EMA over here. And that's a 10% trade. So that's, that in itself could be a quick little trade for you if that's what you're looking for. But yeah, that is pretty much it. If I missed out anything on the charts, please let me know down below in the comment section. I'm going to catch you in the next one, guys. Also, feel free to follow me on Patreon. It's a great way to support me and a great way for me to give back to those who support me. We have low cap gem calls, around about 21 posts for low cap gem calls in there. We have daily TAs. We have video requests, buy and sell alerts project reviews, market sentiment analysis. So just feel free to check that out. That's a great, great way to get more content from me. But other than that, uh, keep in mind the donation links in the, in the description as well. And that's pretty much it. Peace out.